I got some interesting analysis about microtech devices, uh, typical scanning on port 8 to 9-1 TCP. So Ganesh, I understand you have some more info on the microtick vulnerabilities that were being exploited the last couple of weeks? Yes, Jim. Um, I have uh, some important details, you know, some graphics related to port 8291 TCP, which is basically one of the ports used by microtick routers. A microtick is basically, it's a Linux kind of flavor kernel, yep, typically used in um, broadband devices. And there, I think, seems to be most prevalent in most of the world globally based on looking at the scanners. So a couple weeks ago, we had a big spike in a particular port related to Microtech routers. In this case, it was the port used by the Winbox service, and people were using this port as sort of a fingerprint for finding Microtech devices. Prior to the big jump in the scan sources, a week prior to that one, there's a release of the public exploit code to the public internet. As soon as the, this public code has been released to the public internet, there is a sudden increase in scanning, which is kind of initial recon activity to figure out which devices are open or maybe responding to microtic device on uh, 8291 TCP. So you're saying that the, the scanning started and then later on they started building and as more bots were brought into the botnet, they in turn Actually kept scan scanning for it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's, that's one exploit code, actually. If you go back and you're looking for additional exploit for this um, microtic, there seems to be additional two or three exploit codes. They're basically a remote code execution, yeah. uh, kind of, you know, exploit the code and you can ex ex execute any arbitrary code. Right. And also they can be used for any DDoS activities. Right. Uh, I think uh, I'll show from your based on telemetry graphs, you know, how actually the, the activity started and what we have seen it. Uh, I think this, this is basically, this graph basically explains you know, the number of scan sources we are showing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in the week of uh, 324. As you can see, the x-axis is almost flat line yep. prior to this time, and it suddenly jumped, huge spike in there. Uh, in this case, on the y-axis is a number of scan sources, in this case basically 140,000. The red dots here basically, it's one of the alerts we see from our telemetry data. Around this time, 316, there was one, one or two reports at that time, alerts at that time. Mm -hmm. That's actually the recon time. Okay. That's when the exploit could, exploit could relate it to So there's still a few, very few sources. One, maybe, doesn't show up here because we're looking at the... Yeah, b because the scale is so huge. But if you were to look at a list of the flows, you would probably see a... I'll right. actually, I'll show you it in... all right, good. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's another data showing instead of the scan sources, increase in the volume of the traffic. Off the baseline, I see why. So you will have an alarm there, and I can see it. There is a tiny blip there. Yeah, and if you zoom a little bit closer to the, this activity by discounting the huge increase during that weekend, mm -hmm. we can see there's a couple of alerts at this point. All right. So in this graph, basically, I removed the, when the spike actually happened. And as you can see, 316, like a transition time of late 315 and 316, because our graphs are in UTC time. Okay. Uh, the, you, you see basically increase in the spike, and there is some uh, alert in that case. Actually, during that time frame only, the exploit code was released to the public internet. I guess as soon as this uh, code has been in, uh, released to the internet, people mm -hmm. started scanning. Sure. Uh, looking for, you know, that's how the things work. I think at this time they kind of build a vulnerable list or whatever the things they need to scan. They waited for some time. On the weekend they unleashed the power to basically, you know, recruit all those things to further additional scanning. Got it. And maybe do some other, you know, malicious activity. I would like to close out <laughs> with... <laughs> That's a heck of a graph. It's our geographical IP distribution of the scan sources. It's a, it's a very busy, very busy graphic, as you can see, you know, yeah, it's where humans are on the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It seems to be everywhere on the world. It's, it's not particularly concentrated to one specific reason. And based on, you know, short inquiries, a couple of uh, top schools of services in our list, actually they seems to be having microtech devices. All right, that's some good analysis. Okay. You're going to be excited to see our uh, internet weather, I bet. Yeah, I'm sure. 
as I understand it, the, around the 1st of April, they switched from scanning for 8291 to scanning for port 2000. Oh, you got to steal all my thunder, Jim. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's uh, We have noticed it, uh, but probably we'll bring up for another time. That's that's what I was going to talk about. <laughs> all right. All right. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so thanks, Ganesh. Thank you. Uh, in this case, basically, the vendor Microtech provided a patch long, long time ago, I think at least six months ago. Whoever actually applied the patches to the Microtech devices will not be vulnerable. So know your environment, know what services you're exposing on anything that you expose to the internet. And if you're not using the services on an internal router that's running this Microtech software, it's probably a good idea to minimize those services as well.